Hello and welcome to part two of what is a Fusey clock. So I've got all the bits here all cleaned up, they're ready to go now. Uh, the plates are over here, ready to go. So there's a couple of things to know when you're uh, reassembling a Fusey clock and when you're going to set it up. So the first thing I'm going to show you is what this little bit here and the stop on the fuse here for. So I'm just going to reassemble the fuse. And this is quite an important bit. This is the stop that's going to stop us being able to overwind it. So basically what that does as this winds, as we're winding this clock up, this will come round. This is fixed to the front plate of the clock and it's kept off of here with a spring. This little brass spring here, which I'll be screwing on in a minute. And basically you wind the clock round, the fusee chain pulls it in and it will lock into that and prevent the clock being overwound. But I'll show you that a bit better, better when I uh, get it all back in the clock. So I'll just assemble the clock now. What I'll do while I've got this out, I've got the chain dangling over here, it's just been oiled. So you remember you've got the two ends on the chain, you've got the little hook and the end with the bit on the end of the hook that goes on the barrel. So the hook end goes into the fusee And then just wind it onto the fusee. Just making sure it goes down into its grooves. Okay, I'll reassemble the clock. So here's that lever in place and the spring so that it's held off of the fusee until the chain pushes it across. And I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but just here are my initials from 1984 when I last cleaned it. When I was at the um, Brixton College, I actually took this in. As one of the things for us to do, we used to have to get clocks to work on, and this was my mum's that needed servicing, and I did it in 1984. 
and there's my initials for 2021. So we're all reassembled and we're up to quite an important part of it now. So this is pretty much in its fully wound state, but obviously there's no pressure on it because the spring is just sitting in there. So what we have to do is I've got me winding, me let down key here. I've got the, the click just so that I can move it about. I'm getting in a better position. So I've got the click so that I can move it and put it back into position. So now, if we start winding it, you'll see that it starts unwinding itself onto the barrel. You see the fusee is moving very slowly and the chain is unwinding onto the barrel. <clears throat> there are other ways to do this. You can wrap the chain around the, few, the, the, um, the barrel and just wind it up, but this is the preferred way. This is the way I do it anyway. So and we just keep doing that, winding it up a few clicks at a time keeping an eye on this to make sure that it doesn't become loose takes a while and we'll come back in a minute when it's nearly on there and then I'll wind it up and show you how the kit works. So when we get down to you can see down on the fusee there we're at the last couple of winds I tend to go very slowly because you want to get it to just sort of finish up with no power on it so you can set it up so I'll do this last little bit So if we look at the bottom, it's going to be a bit hard to see to try and get this camera angle. But you can see there that the chain now is pretty parallel. It's actually in its hook, it won't go much further. So then what you do is just put some power on it. So now I just want to put about a quarter of a turn or so between a quarter and a half of this click and that will just finish it off and keep everything under tension 
and then very importantly make sure that the click is screwed down nice and tight so now there's always tension on there and it won't fall to bits so now you can wind it so if I get a bit of pegwood and just lock the movement off temporarily so I've got a bit of pegwood through there just to stop it running and now we should be able to wind it up and get the right size the right size key for it Now you should be able to see that the spring is winding off of the barrel and back onto the fusee. And I'll turn the clock over in a second. And see if I can show you. It's not very clear I'm afraid but you can just see the arm here. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit see if it gets a bit clearer. Okay so you can see the arm just here and as you continue winding and it continues to wind onto the fusee chain will come into contact with that arm and start pushing it across you can see the stop coming round now going past it it's not there yet and that's it that stop engages the lever and stops you winding it any further and that's it It's set up, ready to go back in the clock. And I'm just going to let this run off again. I'm going to take the bit of pegwood out and just let it go. And that will then just unwind itself again back onto the, the barrel. And then I can get it back in the clock. So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Um, in the next one I'm probably going to be doing the glass replacement. Not the glass replacement. Soldering the hinge on. But it does involve taking the glass out of the bezel. And making the bit of brass to go back in the inlay. Then it can all go back together and start ticking again. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I've got to fire over 5,000 subscribers now thanks ever so much to every one of you and thanks again for watching and like I said I'll see you in the next one bye for now